Um, I'm a security consultant, uh, work for a crowd called Zyphos, but previously I was one of these, uh, I think the term used was a green bogeyman, um, cyber criminals who, you know, went around and, you know, caused trouble and generally made people's lives hard and probably caused a lot of security teams to get an increase in budget. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to hope these uh, slides show up imminently so I can actually carry on, but um, yeah, hi. <laughs> so what? While we're waiting, uh, uh, Cal is the uh, other part of the dynamic duo. And uh, Cal was the youngest convicted hacker at 12 years old. He was uh, arrested for computer misuse offences, running his own hacking group, and broke into thousands of systems across the UK. Uh, he, he went to prison for 15 months and then turned his life around. Uh, He's now a software engineer and security consultant working with and speaking for high profile organizations such as ARM, West Midlands Police, Sage, HP, and many others. And he's featured on BBC, ITV, ITN, IB Times, and The Register. How are we doing, Cal? Yeah, good to go. Ah, we're good? Ah. Yes, it all works. Success. Um, that's our fault, by the way. We screwed up what we were doing with slides earlier. Um, so yeah, the future of cyber security is the name of the event, but I thought um, the future of cyber insecurity, um, it's going to be great if you're in the security industry. Um, so yeah, this is who I am. Um, as I said, previously a bad guy, um, green bogeyman, etc. cetera. Um, allegedly proper bad dodgy, according to somebody. Um, citation needed. Um, not bad dodgy anymore. Um, nowadays, I do stuff to help people like you fix your security and stuff. So, yeah. These days, you know, you probably, you know, I'm going to give you some of the pessimism. Um, other people are going to tell you, you know, solution stuff. I'm going to tell you how bad it is out there. The current state of affairs is pretty bad. Um, we've got, you know, all these big data breaches, you know, we've got LinkedIn, Dropbox, MySpace, you know, you name it, it's probably been popped and, you know, your passwords are all over the shop. Um, we've got the internet of shit, um, we've got the Mirai botnet and all that nonsense because people keep making little widgets and then giving it an IP address and network connection and going, we'll make more money if we put it on the internet. And then they stick a default password on it and suddenly it gets used to DDoS something and bad things happen and everyone has a bad time. We've got vendors selling nonsense all the time. Um, the amount of businesses that I've encountered where they're, they've nothing to do with cybersecurity and suddenly they go, oh, we're, we're going to sell a box that's got a, a little blinking LED on it and it makes your network more secure. Um, there's a lot of that going around. And finally, with GDPR, it's going to eat your children. Um, it's going to, you know, you know sell, your family, sell your family into slavery, take the farm, take the house, um, the whole lot. So, People are slowly beginning to cop on that this cyber nonsense is something important. Um, I'm going to talk mostly about the massive data breaches and why they affect you. So um, a lot of people, when I say to them, oh, you know, you should be worried about um, big business getting popped, you know, that aren't you, they go, oh, but it's not me, it's not my problem. Um, it is. Um, here I have a number of points. You run, you're part of, or you're responsible for some form of organization. Um, you probably use third-party applications in your organization. You, know, you probably use Dropbox or some third-party stuff. Um, or you have employees who use these things. Um, they tend to you know, sign up with their company email to MySpace or LinkedIn or what have you. Um, this be, you know, and what happens when that gets breached and how this impacts you? Um, did they use their work password? Yes, they probably did because people have one password they use for everything. Um, and they're going to have used it all over the shop. Um, some examples of places that have been breached are here. We have a long list. We have LinkedIn and Dropbox, which you know, have legitimate you know, business uses. We have MySpace, not so much. VK, which is like the <coughs> Russian Facebook or MySpace. We have Badoo, which I don't, I don't actually know what Badoo is. It's, it's some kind of social something site. Um, you have a bunch of, you have a couple of dating and adult sites that people seem to sign up for with their, you know, work stuff for some reason. 
you've got file sharing sites, um, a place like Ashley Madison, things like that, where people just go, oh, yes, I'm going to use my corporate email to sign up here because that's also very clever. They probably paid for their membership with the corporate fucking um, bank card as well. So um, you, should, you should have a look. You know, you probably got a board member who decided to sign up and went, oh, I'll pay for my membership with you know, the work card. That way my wife won't find out. Um, the list goes on. I mean, when you look at the list of services and stuff out there that have been popped, it's a really long list. And it's just growing and growing and growing. And that's the ones we know about. So um, normally, normally today, I've got a bit more fun for you. At the last event like this, I had a nice list of attendees that I went through. And I went through a selection of attendees. And I searched their companies in a little database that I have of breached accounts. Instead of, you know, and I said, here is your risk from these sites and stuff, and here's your risk from random hackers dumping your stuff on the internet that wasn't quite your stuff because it was somebody else's, but you're impacted because of that. But today I'm not going to embarrass you guys, unless you're in the slides anyways, um, because I didn't have your names in time. Instead, I've got a selection of high-profile um, organizations that most of you have heard of. If you are in here, um, well, I'm sorry. Um, don't feel too bad. Everyone is. I sat down and went through like the FTSE 100 and all of them were in there. Um, pretty much any company you can think of is in. I could generate a set of slides and put them in with a number, but this just gives you an idea of the scale of the problem. And this is third parties get breached and your information leaks. You know, you've given your information to some third party, they get popped, your information goes over there. Um, so we've got Experian. Um, Experian apparently do stuff like um, prevent you from falling the victim of fraud or something, credit checks um, and credit protection. But a bunch of their employees show up all over the place. Um, there's an interesting selection of those. Um, and they're just one example. We've got GSK, which is a really big pharma company. Tons of their employees have signed up for stuff. Um, we've got EasyJet. So you could probably use one of their logins to get yourself some free flights or something, or maybe upgrade yourself to whatever EasyJet's equivalent to first class, is, which is probably an extra like quarter of a centimeter of legroom. BP have loads of, you know, their employees seem to sign up for everything. I found a ton of BP employees that signed up to VK. Um, BP are an interesting one. They're oil and gas, so you could probably recycle one of those logins if you work for Shell or something to find out about where BP are going to drill for oil next. Not saying you should, because that's you know computer misuse, act of crime, and don't do it. But you probably could. British Gas, if you want to get rid of your gas bill, and power um, again. J.P. Morgan, um, you know they their employees seem to sign up for just about everything, um, and it goes on. Everyone's favourite airline, where if you pay more, you get less legroom. <laughs> British Airways, where. Apparently, they're no longer, you know, they don't do free food on board. So maybe you could, you know, send them an email from their CEO's email and ask them to, you know, start doing that again. But, you know, you've got Barclays, HSBC, if you want to do some bank. The Met Police are in there because police officers screw up as well. Um, F5, Rackspace, Boeing, Amazon, Coca Cola, somebody wants to get the secret recipe, Oracle. There's a couple of WikiLeaks people who I found their passwords in various public breaches, um, including Julian Assange, by the way. I haven't cracked his SHA-1 hash for Dropbox yet, but it's out there. If somebody wants to loan me a load of time with some GPUs so I can crack that hash, it'd be, you know. The too long to read is everyone's screwed. So you've got employees. They sign up for shit. You know, your employees are going to sign up for some crappy service. And they're going to probably use the same password they use at work or a password similar because people, you know, your end user isn't going to, you know, they're not thinking in security you. They go, oh, I'll just put in work email, I'll put in a password, you know, okay, I've signed up for the service. Service gets breached. And, you know, then you've got problems. Um, you know, and you end up with problems. So people then go, oh, why should I care? And breaches of money lost, you know, you get compromised, um, even if it's via third party, and people do get breached via these third party breaches, because all you do is you download the latest, you know, database dump that's posted on Pastebin or something, you grep, you know, you filter out for, you know, companies you're interested in, you start trying the passwords that were leaked. Statistically, you're going to get one that works, and it's cheaper and easier than brute forcing. You don't have to do any actual work. You'll get in, you'll steal stuff. And breaches mean you lose money. 
Um, what happens when you get owned? You've got um, loss of consumer confidence. You've got share price impact, which is actually temporary. Um, if anyone does share trading, you should watch what happens to a company's share price when they suffer a breach. It dips and comes back up. You have that temporary blip. You know, consumer confidence dips mean TalkTalk Talk lost a ton of customers when they got wrecked repeatedly. Um, I'm not sure if they've ever properly recovered. Remediation downtime costs a ton of money, and I will happily charge you lots of money to help you remediate it um, when you do suffer a breach. And you've got the regulatory nightmare. So at the moment, the ICO will fine you a bunch of money. When GDPR comes in, you're what? <laughs> really done for? <laughs> you know, you're really done for. Um, yeah, the GDPR thing. You've got other people here who will tell you a lot more about it. But um, this, see the third line there? That's the bit that scares me. 4% of annual turnover or 20 million, whichever is more, is what I keep seeing. And I'm like, I'm not a business-minded guy, right? So I sat down and I went, turnover is a bigger number than profit. Turnover is all the money that goes through. Profit's the amount you make off the top. Your profit margin mightn't even be 4%. So if somebody takes 4% of your turnover, you're screwed. You know, you're out of business. You know, you could potentially be completely done. And, you know, that's... Game over. You know, your share price is definitely going to tank then. Um, you know, have fun, I guess. Um, so don't get fined when GDPR comes in. Um, if you're going to get breached, do it before May 2018. <laughs> and disclose it before May 2018. Um, after that, you know, the gloves are off. You know, they're going to properly mess you up with the fines and stuff. Um, they're going to take your house, your kids. Um, sell your grandchildren to slavery probably to pay off this fine, um, you're really done for. And more than likely, it's not going to be your fault. It's going to be some third party gets breached that you know, some employee yours has signed up for. Um, and then somebody's going to recycle the password and worm their way in through that. So yeah, fix your security. Um, you know, do something. Um, somebody will probably sell you a magic widget that will fix it for you or something. Um, I just advise, you know, Doing something and having a good hard think about it, you know, at least consider, you know, properly doing your cybersecurity stuff, you know, actually think about the risks, because it's gonna be a lot cheaper than getting wrecked. Um, and I'll pass you over to Mr. Cal. Okay. Um, Mr. Leeming should be on the way up. Cal? Cal? Can you see me? Oh, okay, one moment. <laughs> um, projectors and printers are two things that pretty much anyone who works in IT hates. <laughs> Can you see me? supposed to come on when I use, you know, the camera, like if I'm Skyping or something. Oh my god. Hello? So, is my mic working? If you could just pull up my slides for me. What you just saw was, uh, it was a film called Webcam Short Video. Oh, film, webcam Short Film. It's made by a, uh, a producer who wanted to highlight some of the risks of using technology. Now you might say, well, that's just fake. It's just Hollywood effects. So, before I touch on that, I'm going to tell you about where I've come from. 
I grew up as a child of the 90s. Okay, I've seen technology grow into this beautiful thing that it is today. Uh, we use it in everything in our lives. Everything. Sending emails, making bank transfers, sending photos to each other. Right? We think we're in control of it. Right? We think we are. But I've seen what happens when we lose control. This video, when people say it must be fake, right? there's people, doesn't matter if you're high profile, doesn't matter if you're just a 12 year old girl or boy just browsing the internet, you can be all victims of these types of attacks. We've seen breach after breach after breach every single day. Just woke up today. And there was, uh, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name of the company. Right, this, is, this is how desensitized we are to these breaches. Okay? We're just seeing it, it's like, okay, sure, move on to the next article. Now I ask you, do you know the real truth about the security in your company? Okay? And when I say the real truth, I mean, how do you know the people that are responsible for the security in your company are actually telling you truth. Sony. I'm not going to harp on about them because they've already been dragged over the coals enough. I actually feel particularly bad for Sony. Do you, do you really think that their C-level executives woke up one day and said, you know what? Today, we're just going to completely screw up our brand for no reason. Of course they didn't. You talk to the C-level execs and they will tell you that as far as they were concerned, they were good. They were being told by the people in charge, the people running their security teams, their IT teams, their, their delivery managers, all these people were telling them, you're good. And it's not just Sony, right? Governments, Mark Zuckerberg himself, Marissa, all of these people, they have all been hacked. A great quote I've heard, and I'm going to steal it. There's two types of companies in the world, those that have been hacked and those that think they haven't been hacked. And yes, I did steal that. That's not original. And you may all, I'm also going to steal this quote. We live in a society where we know the cost of everything and the value of nothing. Who can tell me where that quote's from? Beautiful. I was in his very prison cell in Reading Prison. The value of your data. Who here knows the true value of their data, not only in corporate environments, but also within your home, within your personal lives? Who here can actually say that they know how to value the worth of that data? The Beckhams. Now, I can talk openly about this one because they're not a client. Do you think they realized, or do you think Beckham realized, that a single email was going to be absolutely devastating? Well, a, couple, a few more than a single email. So it's going to be absolutely devastating for his personal brand. And do you think he realized that his biggest risk was not his own personal email, but the people that were servicing his family and his career? How do you know that the clients that you have on board are not a huge risk to your company? We hear quite often from various government speakers that... Don't worry, you're not at risk. The people aren't coming after you. These attackers, they don't care about you. They say this to schools. I hear it quite often from independent schools. GCHQ, all these people coming in saying, you're good, you're good. Yeah. These are schools that have got very, very high profile people going to the, as, as part of their uh, attendees. Right? Wealthy families sending their children to these schools. And you're telling me that they're not at high risk? Maybe, maybe not. Depends. The photo leaks of 2014. Over 100 celebrities publicly violated. Do you think they realised the value of leaving those photos up on iCloud? Do you think they had any sympathy? Just like, uh, just like Sony. Do you think they had any sympathy from the public? No, they were ridiculed. They were told, you shouldn't have been taking photos of yourselves. These, part, these people can't use technology like the rest of us. They're not human. Yeah. They're not allowed to make mistakes. In some cases, they're being told by their senior advisors, 
that don't worry, you're good, you're all secure. Insurance, sure, we all need insurance. Right? We have to have insurance. But there's also a huge problem with the insurance world right now, right? which is that the products that are being sold do not give you 100% coverage for all the different aspects of things that can go wrong. You end up with reinsurance, insurance being sold for insurance companies. Right? You end up with the underwriters arguing with each other for months, years on end, saying, no, this is, you, you should pay this out, you should pay this out, all the while, while you're waiting for a payout, and all the while, whilst you are being left out of pocket. Is that fair? No. So we put in mitigations, right? We, we say, right, we, we're, going to, we, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're going to proudly say we do a penetration test each year and we're secure. We're not going to publish the report, but we're secure. Please trust us. Is that good enough? Who are you? Yeah. Who do you work with? What's your individual threat model? And I can't play this video, annoyingly, because it means I have to go all the way back down there and we're already tight on time. But this is a video from Mr. Robot. Who here has seen Mr. Robot? Good. Anyone else who hasn't seen it, please do go and watch. This clip shows what happens when your smart home is hacked. Right? And people say to me, That's, it's, it's theatre, similar to the one I played at the start. It's theatre, it's not real. We've done this attack on clients. I can very much assure you it's very real. Darren has been moments away from going into a corporate environment and starting a phone party with the fire suppression systems. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's real. I'm going to breeze through these because I realise we are running tight on time. Shodan, a public security research tool. Has anyone heard of Shodan? Okay, great. Shodan allows you to look at what services are available out there on the internet to just go and look at publicly. These are things that people have left open. We've had how much time have we got left? None? A couple more minutes, Cal. All right. Sorry. A wastewater treatment facility processes a lot of crap. Open to the internet. Webcams, videos of children sleeping, playing, all open to the internet. I like to shoot guns. I like to go flying. And I'm now having to really breeze through this. I like to take photos. I'm a little bit of an amateur photographer. Or at least I like to think I am. I've been on Vice, been interviewed by countless magazines, worked for countless numbers of companies. Started, had a startup, really successful, it's great. And I'm going to cut it there. I'm just going to cut it. If you want to talk to me afterwards, please do feel free. I apologise that we've run out of time. Thank you.